in our last video, we'd uh, reached Canyonlands. And all I can say about Canyonlands is it's beautiful. It's one of those places I have to get back to. And I've just touched the very, very tip of the iceberg. I do need to talk about photography a little bit. Um, on this trip, I used, of course, my Nikon equipment, which I've already discussed. I also used a Canon G7X, and I found the form factor just really convenient. I also had an iPhone, and I'll show some of the iPhone photos. Uh, my iPhone SE, I never even considered it as a real camera. The low light performance was extremely poor, but I did get some photos. I'll share some of those as we go. I want to talk about the Canon just a little bit. I used it for about 95% of the video in this whole trip. These days, the video on an iPhone can exceed a lot of the digital SLRs or be as good as a lot of the mirrorless cameras. Uh, in the days that I was traveling, which wasn't that long ago, a couple generations back, um, I had an older iPhone and I didn't want to upgrade because I had real cameras. At least that was the illusion that I was under. I want to mention a drawback, something that bit me on this whole trip. I was using a Canon G7X, which was a capable little video camera, but as far as a stills camera, it had a trick up its sleeve that really hurt me. Uh, in those days, Canon was hit pretty hard with the Canon Cripple Hammer. And I want to mention that it was advertised as a 24 millimeter wide angle lens. When I really got home and looked at a lot of the photos, and 24 millimeters, the corners were wonky. You just never knew where wonkiness would show up, particularly if you stitched photos together into a panorama, which I did a lot. Um, I loved my Nikons, but setting them up on a tripod and lugging them around on hikes and things wasn't always easy. The problem, and I'll show you with the Canons, is it really wasn't able to cover the whole sensor with the 24 millimeter uh, image. So it stretched the corners, and you, so you had real wonkiness because of the stretched image. I'm going to show you a raw file showing you what the projection on the sensor really was. And then, like I said, in, in the camera, they stretched the image. You just never knew when it was gonna get wonky. The camera wasn't really capable of shooting true 24 millimeter uh, sharp images. You had to zoom um, out to the point where you got uh, the equivalent of about 37 millimeters to really have good um, you know, image quality across the frame. And unfortunately, um, that was just uh, too um, narrow of a field of view for a lot of my shots. So uh, I loved the form factor, loved the camera. I got thousands and thousands of photos on the strip with it. But if you see something that's a little wonky, that's what's going on.